Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my channel if you're new and a big warm hello to my subscribers. I love you guys so much. Today I'm bringing you four farmhouse DIYs, a Dollar Tree, two Trash to Treasures, and a Thrift Flip. And some of these will be free DIYs depending on what things you already have in your home. And of course, as always, I hope you enjoy my video. And if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. DIY number one. My first project is this window. It's actually a photo holder. It was $1.50 at a thrift store, 50% off. I'm super excited when I find it because I didn't really want to go the Dollar Tree route where you take a whole bunch of photo frames and glue them together. It just didn't seem structurally sound and I was always worried that might fall apart and if I hang it on the wall it would come crashing down. So I'm really happy I find this. I take some regular acrylic white paint and I'm just going to lightly dry brush a thin layer of white paint on it. I don't want to hide the fact that it is real wood because that's obviously one of the wonderful things about it is, this, is that it's real wood. You know, when I craft, I watch Hallmark movies like back to back. I'm actually kind of embarrassed to admit that. Maybe it's a little nerdy, but I love it. It's just no stress. And it got me wondering what you guys do when you craft. So leave a comment below and tell me what you like to do while you craft. So here's some wood that is actually from the bunk bed that I had my little boys in. And that's the railing that held my little boy in so he didn't fall out when he was little and I'm just giving it a light coat of paint now I'm really excited because this is going to be the flower box at the bottom of the window and it's real pine and the whole time I'm crafting with this there's just this super super fresh smell of pine I love wood I love the smell of it look of it everything and I really have a great respect for trees and for people who go out of their way to repurpose wood and recycle it and avoid throwing it away for as long as possible as long as there's some life left in it there are these amazing I don't know if there's men cause there might be I just haven't come across their videos yet but there are these remarkable gals on YouTube that literally hop into a landfill to pull out the furniture. I mean, they're like my hardcore heroes. I'm like, did you just do that? I actually totally support that, but I get so stressed watching them because I think they're in there with no mask and no gloves. Sometimes when people are throwing away furniture, there's a reason why they did that instead of donating it to a thrift store. Just something to keep in mind. You don't know what's on the furniture. So lots of fun, you guys, but please be careful. I mean, for example, there could be asbestos on it. I mean, you just don't know. That's my point. So please wear at least gloves until you get home and you can wash it off. So here I'm using wood glue. And I've talked about this in previous videos, so if you're watching my video for the first time, wood glue is amazing for raw wood. It is structured at a molecular level to actually soak into the pores and become one with the wood. The wood bonds so strongly that if you pull it apart, oftentimes the wood will go with the glue. I have so little paint on there that there's enough grain hanging out that I'm going to have an easy bond there, so no worries. However, if you paint your wood, really thick with paint or you put a polyacrylic mod podge anything like that game over because it can't do its job at the molecular level that's a bleh, sorry, the molecular level the molecule level so just keep that in mind if you want a really strong bond and you're working with raw wood stick with the wood glue so there's what we have so far and i'm going to grab what's becoming one of my favorite you know, craft items spackling and you can also get this at the dollar tree i left a link in my description box to the one that I bought but I'm just filling in the cracks there so that everything looks nice and connected for those of you that watched me build a free ladder in my seriously free DIY series number two that's a piece of wood that I actually used as a palette to control how much paint I was going to put on that brush but it's going to be a perfect aged bottom for this flower pot so I cut it in half and see how it's thin, you're not gonna see it. And I just wanted to stick with wood, you guys. I didn't wanna use any foam board, cardboard, or anything, because it is a solid wood piece. So it worked out really, really well. And now I'm just taking some black paint and aging it and making it look like it's been outside. I 
I did want to mention for this particular video, I'm dealing with three DIYs that are rather large and difficult to keep in camera view. I experimented with so many ways, different camera angles. I whipped out my tripod, put the camera on that, got the full view of the table, you know, the full lay of the land out there. And it, there was something about that view, no matter how I turned the camera, it just seemed like it might bother people who are prone to dizziness or vertigo. I don't know, I'm always trying to be sensitive and think about everybody out there. And it seemed like the most pleasant view was still from the top. So I just tried to work within that space and I hope it's okay for everybody. So here are the Walmart flowers. And I wanna show you what I didn't get to show you last time is how full they are. This is what's a really big deal because they have tons of little branches on. And I only use the little individual branches. So I'm actually cutting them apart and they do a remarkable job at filling everything out really, really well. The Dollar Tree has beautiful flowers too, but I'm not sure they're as full, so for the price, it might work out to be the same. And, you know, I really love how this turned out. You guys, for me, this is a big deal because I have waited what seems like forever to have one of these cute little farmhouse windows. They're just, you know, if you have farmhouses, like you gotta have one of these little window boxes. So I'm super excited about it. And I hope you guys love it as much as I do. Before we move on to DIY number two, this video is in collaboration with the very sweet and very talented Casey over at Coffee With My Sunshine. I'm sure most of you already know about her channel, and if you don't, you're missing out. Casey is another one of YouTube's most talented creators. And like most of us, she crafts using Dollar Tree items because you can't beat Dollar Tree for cheap craft supplies. But she doesn't just stop there. What I really love about Casey's style is that she rocks at thinking outside of the box. She uses whatever she can find a craft with, household items, recyclables, real trash, thrift finds, and turns them into beautiful home decor. And of course, that style just resonates with my own drum beat. And to boot, Casey has one of the most relaxing presentation styles on YouTube. So if you're looking for amazing crafters on YouTube, please go and check out her channel and tell her I said hi. DIY number two. This is a piece of wood. I drilled two holes on either side I'm showing you. And there's some other holes that were there from, it was actually a bed frame my older son built for my younger son. And at first I thought, oh, it doesn't matter. Those other holes will make it look more rustic and distressed. But unfortunately, once I painted it with the homemade chalk paint, there's my cat, <laughs> and they become too pronounced. So I do end up taking some spackling and filling those in. And if you're interested in my chalk paint recipe or how to make it, I leave that link below in my description box and at the end of the video. But this wood is actually probably about one and a half inches in depth and maybe seven inches across. It's a really big, heavy piece of wood, so it's not going to be an easy thing to craft with, but you know me, I'll take free wood and I'll take it in any way. So I take this and you'll notice also that I'm switching the camera angles. That's to make it more comfortable on your eyes again, because again, I noticed there was something weird about the depth perception in certain angles because these crafts are really big. So here, I'm, hold on, struggling with my cat. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's trying to jump on top of my computer. I'm so sorry. We had a little bit of a ruckus here. Okay, everything's back under control now. He's where he wants to be. Sorry about that. If you heard a lot of banging, he was trying to hop on top of my computer armoire. He likes to be on the top there, and he's a big cat and very clumsy, so I had to stop and help him get up. But anyway, I was going to do the word country cottage here, and it ends up being too big. So I take the C from the country, the U and the R, and I'm going to make it R cottage. Using carbon paper, my favorite way to transfer, and I'm just going to makeshift that C into an O.
for those of you that were asking me where are the printables for what I'm doing about four videos ago about four weeks ago I guess that makes it about four weeks or maybe a little bit longer I have been uploading them to an online site so that you can go ahead and download and print up the exact same thing if you want to recreate it and then you can adjust the size however you want it to be and that's below in my description box so here is the painter's pen and I love it for this reason now you notice I'm not using it to fill in hardly anything and that's because it's more expensive to buy paint in a painter's pen I'm just outlining all of the letters because clean crisp edges are so important if you want a sign to look expensive and you know professional so after I get all of my edges done nice and clean I just take cheap old apple barrel paint gotta love apple barrel paint and fill it in with black paint before I forget to the image that I uploaded obviously doesn't have my makeshift O but it, it has a prettier O in my opinion but both those are nice I like the O better I uploaded so it's all good but I just want to let you guys know that if you wanted the O that I have then you would need to print up two of the cottages or just the C there and print that up and then make shift it like I did. I made this sign because it stands up on its side. It's going to stand on a little ledge on the backyard fence to discourage my cat from trying to jump on that ledge when he tries to make his great escape out of my backyard. It has the two little holes there so I can tie it on so it doesn't fall on him <laughs> in the process. But that's the story. And here's some white acrylic paint. I'm just dry brushing it on to distress it, make the letters look nice and old and antiqued. And this Mod Podge is actually half water-based polyacrylic and half Mod Podge. I like to kick it up a notch when something's gonna be outside because it's exposed to the elements. If you guys have any wood, this craft will be free for you, of course. And here it is. I absolutely love it, totally charming. DIY number three. You'll need a pot of some kind. That's a Dollar Tree terracotta pot. I love those little pots, but in my video, the Boho Easter one, believe it or not, I go over several different options you can use for pots that you will have around your house. And if you watched my seriously free DIY video number three, I also show you how to make a fake succulent. So this can also be a free DIY if you have the things you need around the house. A lot of choices, so check out those two videos. But here I'm just putting on a layer of my homemade white chalk paint. I thought this craft was going to be really simple and it ended up being a little more complicated than I thought it was going to be. But I love the way it turned out. So once it's dry, I decide that it needs something. And here's some Dollar Tree transfers that I found at the Dollar Tree. And I'm after that little succulent right there. And the sticker is super thick so unfortunately it doesn't bend as easy as I thought it was going to and it doesn't want to stay down so I have to contend with that and the way that I end up dealing with it is I do have to tear it ever so slightly to get it bent under that rim because I want it to go up on the rim a little bit but I end up having to dry the Mod Podge while I'm pressing down the top of the sticker, you know, all the places that the sticker isn't sticking, I have to blow dry and press it down at the same time, and then that does it, and then I have to do a second coat of the Mod Podge. And this is actually the Mod Podge with the poly acrylic because I completely forgot that I was using the one with the poly acrylic, which is, it made it, it made it so when I touched the paint, it was super sticky. I end up pulling some off. I didn't mean to distress this pot at first. And then when I pull a little bit of paint off, I realize, you know, these are the accidents that happen when you're crafting, but I realize it looks really good distressed and it will go better with where I'm going to put it. So it's all good. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Pinterest. I have a board over on Pinterest where I share your crafts and photos. Make sure if you send me a photo too that you're very clear that you want me to share it so I don't do that by accident. You can share it with me. I'd love to see it, but you know, I need to know if you're okay with it being public or not. And there you can see I'm doing the second coat to make sure that the sticker stays down. And you also saw me add distressing. You know, I went with the flow and used some sandpaper to add a little more distressing. Not easy through polyacrylic, you guys, but I got it done. I ruined the sandpaper, but I got it done. And here it is. I 
love this of course it's so cute super sweet and if you're looking at the succulent that's not a Dollar Tree succulent they are never at my Dollar Trees I don't know why I've gone everywhere either they sell out or they don't carry them but that is from Amazon I will leave that link below too because I got a great deal on a set DIY number four saw this on Pinterest fell in love wanted to make one whipped out my power tools Just use more of that super thick sign wood and the $1.18 Home Depot furring strip and I laughed so hard at this next scene. So I watched that scene of my husband sawing away like a madman probably about six times and I was laughing so hard I was tearing because I am sure when I started my YouTube channel, he did not expect that he would ever be in a video sawing some legs on a little farmhouse chair. And then I started laughing because it occurred to me how many videos I've watched where I see husbands also, you know, we DIY girls, we suck those husbands into it somehow eventually. And they come to the rescue when the job gets a little tougher than we can do. So bless their hearts. I think it's so cute and so funny very grateful and you know it's just one of those things in life that it's so sweet that it makes me smile so just using my wood glue and hot glue to tack this little chair together I'm gluing it on the back of the chair so here's where I messed up so if you guys make this chair and I recommend that you do because it's so cute leave that back piece that you see right there where I have to glue it together I should have left that in one piece but I was thinking oh a chair has four legs so I cut four legs but duh that was a boo-boo so first glue the back strip on and then measure what you need for the front leg because I end up having to reinforce the back with a craft stick which is no big deal because no one's going to see the back because I have it down at the bottom of my ladder and mistake number two I glue it with the holes in the front there's no holes on the other side and oh I don't know what I was thinking I didn't notice that but once you get that wood glue down with the hot glue, it will be more problematic to try and move it. And I knew that. So I decided, go ahead and fill it with spackling, sand it down. You won't notice it when it's stained, and you don't. And it ended up being an easier route. And here, I wait 24 hours for everything to dry because this front piece is a very tight fit and it does put counter pressure on the two front legs. I bought this stain through Amazon because it was a non-odor water-based acrylic stain and I thought it would have a little bit of that glide factor but nope it's equivalent to watered down acrylic paint I add a little bit of black to it it's also black walnut not the black walnut that we think of with Minwax it's a little more reddish I love the color it comes out to be when I mix it with the black paint but I do end up having to apply it with a baby wipe to get the glide factor and you know I'm not going to recommend it because I think it's equal to paint but if you're interested I do leave it in the link down below in my description box because a lot of people on Amazon do give it a five star review so you might want to go check it out but this craft without a doubt hands down is the cutest craft I have ever made it actually brings me joy when I look at it I feel joy it is so cute it basically functions like a two-tier tray you put little knickknacks and little cute decor items on top there's a little succulent it's too cute I mean look at it you guys that is like the ultimate farmhouse decoration in my opinion it's a little farmhouse chair but it is so cute and a big thank you to Casey for inviting me to collab with you it has been a total honor if you like what you saw, give me a big thumbs up. And of course, until the next video, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.